Uploading AI program now. So in the opening cutscene, Sage has dialogue, but for some reason the dialogue isn't subtitled the way the rest of the game is. No, no, see, it's different, because this time it's cyberspace. Um, I'm movie Sonic now? Why? Return to cyberspace as many times as it takes. Yeah, we'll just listen to this random ominous voice whose origin is unknown to us. It's not like they didn't literally just tell us not even 10 minutes ago that escaping from cyberspace is supposed to be impossible. I appear to be in a digital dimension. I've employed similar constructs in my own systems, but this is markedly more advanced. Note to self, don't admit that to anyone. You gotta admire Dr. Eggman's ingenuity. The buttons on his vest serve multiple functions, such as recording audio logs, turning him into Buzz Lightyear, and... just being nipples. You know, not only is it strange that these are the only bits of dialogue with no voice acting, it's especially strange that it's not denoted who's talking. For the most part, the Elder and Hermit Coco will be the ones talking to Sonic, but every so often, Sonic will say something himself, and it's not really obvious when that switch happens until you read something that wouldn't make sense for one of the Coco to say. How are you feeling, Amy? I mean, what's it like being all... ghosty? Have you ever had a dream that... That you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. Yeah, hang in there, Amy. Man, I love all of Sonic's new abilities in this game, like the one where he just fucking defies gravity for as long as he wants. Excuse me, someone, you left your sassy child up on this tower. Instead of being an intimidating villain, she's just vibing. So I know the explanation is probably the Ancients technology or whatever, but how are we climbing this? Knuckles uses the spikes on his gloves, but Sonic just Spider-Man's up the tower. This poor mother says she's lost her children. The back here, sure thing. Man, this game cared so much about properly acknowledging and representing Sonic's past that they even referenced how the characters used to interrupt each other in Adventure 2. Why do the Coco drop bombs when I'm trying to guide them to their mother? I'm just trying to help them get home. Why hurt me? Big the cat! It's big the cat! We interrupt Sonic Frontiers to bring you Yakuza. Froggy really likes those purple coins. If you bring me one, I'll let you borrow my rod again. Speaking of Froggy, I don't think we ever see him in this game. Big doesn't really say he's looking for Froggy, but considering that Big is looking for new fishing spots and the fact that we never even see Froggy around, is it safe to assume you lost the fucking frog again? Oh, sick. I think that means we get to go to Willy Walrus's chocolate factory or whatever. A fish that is gold in name but red in color. They are bred for their ornamental value and aren't found in nature. Uh, but I literally caught it in a pond. Is that not considered nature? Or is it because it was in cyberspace and so that's technically not in nature? What are the rules, damn it? Okay, look, I didn't want to do this because basically everyone else has already done it at this point, but we gotta address it. Starfall is just a blood moon from Breath of the Wild that make it gambling. Coco are just Korok seeds but make them chow. And the purple coins are like the ones from Super Mario Odyssey but make them fishing. Look forward in time to view alternate futures, to see all the possible outcomes of the coming conflict. How many did you see? 14,605. How many did we win? One. Okay, so I know I made the Attack on Titan joke earlier, but Giganto specifically looks so much like an Evangelion unit. I'm feeling more like my old self. It's working. Keep going and don't keep me waiting. I'll be back before you can do a fortune card reading. Yeah, because that's always been a thing. Right? Seriously, did you know that her tarot card reading and fortune telling thing has only ever been mentioned in three, technically four games before this one? The Japanese manual for Sonic CD, Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, and finally again in Sonic Origins. And that was 
Sonic Frontiers. You know, it's weird. I could have sworn we were promised five islands. Oh, well. Can I go now? It sure is. No, but seriously, these are some of the most unique robot designs we've gotten in a Sonic game. And yeah, they do look like animals, but why are they relegated to such simple names like Squid and Shark and Caterpillar? Even Sonic 3 gave us Monkey Dude. You are the key. Be empowered with this technique. Not gonna lie, weird mysterious voice. I kind of forgot you were here. I haven't heard you in like two hours. Laser! Also, discount zero fight from Sonic Adventure. Or, hmm, what would one call something that copies something else but does it better? You know, looking at Ares Island, the only thing I can think of is near Automata. Sonic Front Nears. Yep, that's it, that's the joke. Portal 2.4 presents something that's really strange. Remember in the 3DS version of Sonic Generations how one of the levels you go to is Radical Highway, a shadow stage from Sonic Adventure 2? Yeah, they do that again for this game, and I still really don't understand why. Sonic never visits Radical Highway. Unless, of course, you count the opening cutscene of Adventure 2 Battle, or City Escape and the Bigfoot boss fight being Radical Highway adjacent. It wasn't until I started fishing again that I realized how massive some of these normal ass fish are compared to the absolute freak of nature that is Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, they're so big, they make Sonic look like he's posing for a photo to put on his dating profile. So, in Big's fishing spots, you can reel in some items from the classic games such as springs, star posts, gold plates, and while I'm willing to accept that they might just be cute little references, what are the lore implications here? Being able to catch choppers makes sense because they're fish. Badnik fish, sure, but still fish. And with the idea being that cyberspace takes from characters as memories, these items being here makes sense, but why are they in the water? What makes this weirder is that no matter what fishing spot we're in, we always seem to be in a place that resembles Kronos Island, but why? This is still within cyberspace, so you would think it'd resemble somewhere from one of these characters' memories like the other portals do. Or at least a new location not resembling any of the islands the way the city levels do. It's so bizarre that Big's fishing spots are the places that bring these questions to light. Similarly, the only way to retrieve the Egg Memos is from Big, and it's assumed that Eggman has been here for a while. But for starters, how is it that Eggman lost his audio logs in the first place? Secondly, unless he somehow recorded everything he knows up until this point, which includes knowing who's also gotten trapped in cyberspace, did he lose all the Egg Memos at once? Or did he keep losing them one by one? It's assumed Big can navigate cyberspace freely the same way Eggman can, and unless the Doctor was throwing his audio logs into random-ass ponds, I doubt Big found these by fishing. I found elements from my own Eggnet. Eggnet? That's a new one. Wait, that's from the comics? Okay, that's interesting. I'm just saying, I think it's kind of weird that the communications network for the Eggman Empire never had a name in the games, and it's a bit odd that it's never been relevant until now. If I'm being honest, I didn't even really know the Empire had a communications network. It makes sense, it just never really came up, I guess. You'd think we'd have heard it mentioned beforehand, is all I'm saying. Who were the ancients? They predate any civilization by a wide margin. The echidnas? The black arms? Please. The Babylonians? <laughs> Hardly. And yet they didn't seem to influence the world beyond these three piddly islands. Three piddly islands? What but stopped them there are five, the are there not? Are Rhea and Uranus just a part of Kronos? If so, why give them distinct names, and why even name them as islands? I don't believe this. I had Sage run a diagnostic on the recorded genetic data of the ancients, and then against archives I have with me. They're relatives of Chaos, the god of destruction. After countless years, their DNA corroded to the point they were completely transformed into a new species. Some kind of radiation affected them for eons, making them unrecognizable. Except to a genius like me. But didn't you just say in the previous memo that the ancients were wiped out within a generation? Did this genetic corrosion happen before they came to this planet? Was it after they were attacked and fled with the Chaos Emeralds? Because if so, enough of them must have survived in order to procreate and continue their evolution into this new species, right? 
Are you saying this radiation turned them into the ancients that resemble Chaos Zero, or that the radiation turned the ancients into what we know today as the Chao? The latter would make more sense given that light and dark seem to be a constant force on this planet, given light and dark Gaia, what we later learn about the end, the ability for Chao to evolve into hero or dark versions of themselves, and finally their ability to, as adults, closely resemble the ancients themselves, but again, that contradicts the idea that the ancients were wiped out within a generation. Enough of them had to survive in order to become what we know today. Sage is performing at peak efficiency. Makes me wonder where I went wrong with Orbot and Cubot. Yeah, I don't think I've ever brought that up, but where did you go wrong with Orbot and Cubot? Was it their autonomy? Did their free will allow them to make a complete ass out of you? Sage keeps running the numbers by me and it's getting tedious. Yes, the power that wiped out the ancients was formidable. Yes, unleashing it on this world would be catastrophic. But I'm a genius! Once I'm out of here, I'll find a way to handle it. Better yet, weaponize it against Sonic. Eggman, that's worked a total of once, and even then you still lost. <laughs> Green Hill's looking a lot more like Pumpkin Hill right now. Skyrail from Adventure 2? Sonic was nowhere near this level in that game. Have, have Sonic Team played Sonic Adventure 2? Did they forget that they made Shadow playable in that game? Because the only time Sonic has been to Skyrail was in an E3 trailer from the year 2000 before Shadow Rouge and Tails were playable. And unfortunately, you know what reusing level design is inevitably going to do? It's going to make the player draw parallels between the recreation and the original, and while you can scrutinize whether or not the reuse of level design mixed with, at this point, overutilized environment designs is considered lazy, my biggest issue is that the cyberspace stages set you on such a linear path that the adventure games didn't quite do. While I can't even joke about the camera being good in those games, I could at the very least rotate it to see my surroundings further, which I would love to do in Portal 2.6 since I could do so in Adventure 2, and because the level design sometimes calls for it. I would say that maybe 75% of the time I wasn't fighting the camera in cyberspace, but Portal 2.6 is a great representation of that 25% when I was. Especially since you can move the camera in cyberspace, but only sometimes, and it doesn't always make sense when you can or can't. I don't know how I missed this when I played initially, but the lighting engine was casting a shadow that was bugging the hell out during this cutscene, and I have zero idea what it was coming from. I wonder what that symbol means in their language. Now come to think of it, you don't actually see it printed anywhere in the villages. I guess the true meaning is lost to time. When you guys say the symbol, are you referring to the question marks and the check marks on the signs? Cause that hasn't been lost to time. We know what those mean. Look, just take a second to tell me who you are, what's going on, and why you look like you want to smite me on the spot. That is irrelevant. Knowing, not knowing. It will change nothing. Then why don't you just tell me? Okay, who puts springs in the middle of a damn forest? I'll admit, I do envy your lifestyle. Freedom to go where you want, when you want. So do it. Get out there and live a little. What the f*** do you mean, live a little? He joins you guys on adventures all the time! So, okay, I'm going to address the pop-in that this game has. I want to preface this by saying that throughout the whole game, I didn't think it was that big a deal because the core gameplay loop was fun to me. Something not looking nice has no impact on the game itself. A game can look god-awful, but that has no bearing on whether or not it's fun to play. Where it is a problem is when it prevents me from doing or knowing I can do certain things. While on Ares Island, I was collecting Knuckles' memory tokens to advance his side story, and I was in an area where I couldn't figure out how to get one that I could see from a fair distance. What I didn't realize was that I wasn't close enough to the platforms that would lead me there, so they hadn't appeared to me yet. And I have to ask why this game didn't implement some kind of dynamic LOD. LOD stands for Level of Detail, and it's an optimization technique implemented in games to reduce the number of polygons rendered on screen depending on how close the camera is to any given asset so that the game can run smoothly, and they've been a thing since the dawn of 3D platformers. Without them, all the assets in a given level would be loaded at once, and let's just say that's no good for a game's performance. And what bothers me the most is that they wouldn't have had to do anything too fancy to implement it. There are certain platforms in this game that load in after pressing a button that seem to form from a light. That's a perfect way of doing it. Did they think it would be too distracting because of how fast you can run? Probably no more distracting than just having them appear out of nowhere. In that case, they could have just had the assets fade into existence depending on how close you are to them. And again, this isn't that big a deal to me, it's nothing game-breaking, but it's a simple bit of polish that I genuinely don't think would have been too difficult to implement. 
The spooky sky boy says I just have to trash the titans to get you guys back to normal, so we have a plan. Oh yeah? Why isn't it talking to the rest of us then? Look at the size of this... what do you call it? Satellite dish? It's for communications, right? Yeah. I've seen all sorts of crazy, high-tech, ancient tech across both islands. How can something this old be this advanced? It's sturdy, too. I punched it. It didn't move at all. Yeah, Nux, don't punch the ruins. Hold on, what are the rules, actually? Because the only thing we've ever seen them be able to interact with was Knuckles being able to block Sage's energy beam. Sonic and Knuckles did kind of fist bump earlier, but isn't it shown that the characters aren't physically here? That they're transparent? Why would Knuckles be able to punch a wall, but not be able to help us defeat the four towers that appeared earlier near one of the temples? We interrupt Sonic Frontiers to bring you the Crane minigame from Mario Party. So long, you game Bowser! Not bad. Things would have been over faster if I'd been Super Knuckles. Yes, and I would have loved to see that after almost 30 years! Bring him back, you cowards! Damn, this is a rough day for Sonic, constantly getting shot by lasers in the air, losing the Chaos Emeralds every time. This is just 3D Tetris. So I was just chilling on this puzzle ring and this happened. How's that for a Sonic speed strat? It was during my fishing stint on Chaos Island that it hit me. What do we do with all the fish we catch? Are we doing it for sport and then just toss them back into the pond? Are we giving them to Big to eat later? Does he keep them as pets? Does he keep them at all? That's not a black bass, that's yellow at best. I caught an alligator, but how come the alligator looks normal? How come he doesn't look more like Vector? I get that he's a crocodile, but is that the difference? Croc means anther and gator means normal? The seed of an oak tree. Some are round while others are long and thin. A somewhat lackluster catch in a nutshell. Boo! Get off the stage! Why is the game reminding me at this point, almost 12 hours later, of something I already know how to do? I understand Tails is trapped. I've already done this with Amy and Knuckles. This ain't my first rodeo. I've been playing this game for- I'm inside the wall. I am inside the geometry I am not meant to be. So there's a part on Chaos Island where you have to fly an eagle to the next area because there's nothing that will get you there safely otherwise. The only way to do that is to successfully use its pole to hop on its back but you can only do that after you've homing attacked it. But you can't homing attack it until you've successfully parried one of its lasers. And even then, you need to guide the eagle to the part of the island where you can do that without crashing it into the ground before you get there, and it's such an involved set of circumstances that are finicky enough to set up that I don't know how they thought anybody would think to do it. That is a Xenoblade Chronicles boss. That is a face mechon. That is straight up metal face. So I think I've figured it out. The Coco are the spirits of the ancients. Are you fucking serious? How did you not get that from Amy's story? Did they assume that maybe I hadn't done that? How? It's a main story quest. At this point, I wouldn't mind Shadow lending me a hand. So that was an incredibly rare line of dialogue that Sonic can have at random points in the game. Sometimes he'll talk about his surroundings, or certain characters, certain locations from his past, and I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what triggers any of them. Some of them seem to only happen in specific locations, but even then, it's not guaranteed you'll hear the line. In fact, were it not for this unique instance that I managed to capture alongside the Mystic Ruins line in Kronos Island that I just figured always played, I would be convinced that these lines aren't actually used in the game at all. That's how rare they are. You could be standing around from five minutes to an hour before Sonic comments on anything. I bet Tangle would love climbing around these ruins. Tangle? Like, as in the lemur? Whose only appearances in video game form were in Sonic Dash as a limited time event and Sonic Forces Speed Battle? Two mobile games wherein she shares the exact same render, only one of them has a bold outline? Uh, yeah, when did that happen? You can't just bring her up as if she's always been here. Smells lush and green. Reminds me of Green Forest. You had the time to appreciate the smells and learn the name of an area on an island where you were locked up and promptly had to escape from because it was about to blow up? 
I had assumed this whole time that the rails and dash rings and boost pads and all that were a product of the ruins left behind by the ancients, or just video game logic. I didn't think too in depth about it. Until I saw this egg spring, because that now implies that all of this was built and left behind by Eggman. But if that's the case, why are they left in the state that they are? These things are tough to take down, even for me. No, they weren't. You and the Avatar yeah, took one of them out with a double homing attack. Hey. Let's see what Eggman was trying to do with this thing. Take over bad, the world? Off. Isn't that what he was doing with these last time? Suddenly, Karuga, and oh my god, I cannot believe I am saying that in a Sonic the Hedgehog game. I'm sure you've run into this scenario already. What did you do? Well, I helped him out. But isn't that cruel? Their battle is long over. This feels dishonest. We're not fixing the problem they think they have, but we are bringing them peace. Well, when you put it that way, let's get to work. What did you think we were doing? I'm surprised you didn't come to that conclusion yourself, Tails. Like, yeah, of course it's a little too late to help them. You saw them die. How do you know that the Coco hold the souls of the ancients, know how we helped Chaos, and still not piece together that we're trying to help them move on? Sonic, do you think I can... Change? Tails, buddy, you're eight. Considering people still see you as a kid, it's safe to say you're not in the middle of your life the way you would be if you were a real fox, so I'd say you still have the rest of your life ahead of you in order to change into who you want to be. Whatever. Some spooky cyber copy hasn't seen you in action. I've seen it firsthand. You've definitely grown, and I know you'll keep on working hard. Sonic, help me! Dude, f this minigame. You are given just enough time to break open boxes to collect 600 mechanical bits that scatter onto floors that fall into lava if you don't do it fast enough, but if you try and go too fast, you overshoot the boxes and fall into the lava yourself, which you can only fall into three times, and the nuts and bolts don't magnetize to you. Or, well, sometimes they don't. Some boxes you can homing attack and get the bits, others you have to combo because they're bigger. And you can't waste time trying to grab every bit, because otherwise you won't have enough time to grab more! Yay! Miles Prower, you have known Sonic most of your life. Yeah, and? Your imprisonment within cyberspace. The defeat of the Ancients' Titans. Do you trust how he is handling it? With your life? Of course. I'll admit he isn't perfect, but Sonic has overcome impossible odds over and over again. I know he'll save us all. So you're saying you have faith in him? It's not a matter of faith. I've got a lifetime of data to back up my observations. Your loyalty is founded on empirical data. Well, he says it is, but you're not being presented with any of it. How are you trusting him when he's only presented the equivalent of faith? All he did was point at his brain and cite his sources, trust me, bro. Look, either stop being cryptic and tell me what's going on or skedaddle. There would be no point. How many times have we done this shit over the course of this story? Sonic asks Sage a perfectly valid question that Sage ascertains is pointless in answering, refuses to elaborate or answer the question, and then leaves. After reviewing your entire campaign history, I have found the most optimal course of action is to... create an alliance with Sonic. What? B but together, you stopped the Ark, overcame Neo Metal. Well, I mean, like, yeah, they did sort of team up in Sonic Heroes, but Eggman was locked up for most of that. His only contribution was saying that the only way to defeat him would be to use the Chaos Emeralds, which... You don't need an IQ of 300 to come to that conclusion. Everyone else overcame Neo Metal together. Eggman kind of just was there. Those alliances were purely out of desperation. But time is running out. I don't want to hear it. Find me another option. There is none, you clown. I ran the simulations, you asshat. 1,700,051 of them. I was programmed by you to do this, and I am telling you that the only one in which you get out of here is the one where you team up with Sonic, Dad. Whenever there's a crisis, I'm either running away or standing on the sidelines. You are always rescuing me when all I do is follow you around. Hey, who was it who stopped Eggman from blowing up Station Square, huh? 
And who broke me out of prison, or saved me from the Deadly Six's trap? I... then I'm wildly inconsistent. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's not entirely your fault. Some people just don't like doing their homework to find out what you're all about. So, in this part of the game, I have to do a free-falling minigame in order to drop the bridge from the other side, but... Why? There's no way the bridge isn't close enough for Sonic to just run up it and land on the other side. In fact, I tried doing that and would totally make it if not for the invisible wall they put there. And speaking of this minigame, throughout the story there are mandatory minigames you have to complete and these award you with Chaos Emeralds which aren't in Emerald Vaults for whatever reason. But I singled this one out in particular because in previous ones you could argue that a Coco or an enemy or something had the Chaos Emerald that was only revealed after we completed the task. But here, all we did was lower the bridge. Where did this Chaos Emerald come from? Why? Hey little bro, feeling better? Yeah. This whole experience gave me a kind of clarity. When this is all over, I think I need to go it alone for a while. I can't grow into my full potential if I always fall back on you. But don't you do that all the time anyway? How often do you guys spend time together? Because you guys have said long time no see pretty frequently throughout this series, but what do you define as long time? I thought you all went your separate ways after every adventure. Such a beautiful friendship. A family born of love, and not genetics. Everything I want. Sage? More like Sag. Also, what do you mean, genetics? What genetic code do you have? Aren't you an artificial intelligence? Did Eggman... put his genetic code in you? Wait, does that mean you're also Eggman Sega with an N instead of an S's ancestor? What kind of family tree is this? Wow, look at all these precious memories from, like, a couple hours ago, and that's it. Yeah, that's the sound I would make if I fell in love with too. <laughs> five million points. You have to score five million points in a game of pinball with unpinball-like physics in order to advance the story, which technically isn't the worst thing in the world to do, but sometimes the red rings, which serve as score multipliers, spawn in positions that I can only hit if I get lucky, making getting enough points a slog. And as if to add insult to injury, getting all those points isn't enough. After doing that, I still have to make sure the ball goes directly above the board in order for it to matter. The only way they could have made this worse is if they went the Sonic Pinball Party route and gave me a time limit. Whatever you did triggered an eruption and the lava burned. Wait, how did we make it out? Did Sonic bolt the second he won at pinball? Because the lava covering the exit came down pretty quickly. Whoa, what? Why'd I lose the emeralds this time? I get it, Sonic is probably tired after the fight with the knight, but normally we still keep the chaos emeralds unless they're blasted out of us. And you could argue that it's the islands calling their power like they have before or something, but if that's the case, why were we allowed to keep them before? Why wouldn't every island just call them back after we get them? So I missed the conversation with Sage, so before doing Rhea Island, I went back to get it, and I guess they really expected you to see this conversation before you completed Chaos Island, because despite the fact that I've already defeated the knight, it showed up in the arena again during this cutscene. During this reveal, you can see Sonic's planet in the background, and what look to be lights coming from the dark side of it. As far as I understand it, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, lights like that would only be visible from space if there was a high concentration of them, meaning that they're likely artificial, right? And it seems to be a large chunk of the planet that's like that, meaning that it's not coming from the ancients on the Starfall Islands. How long ago did this happen? How advanced was civilization when the ancients were still around? Sonic worked too hard for us to give up now. Those visions we saw, we can drive back the corruption and bring him back. Anything for Sonic. Whatever it takes. Sonic, I want you to see the hero I become. Sonic, you still have love to share with this world too. Sonic, we're even after this. <laughs> my friends are literally my power cliche. This is our chance. I never simulated a scenario where Sonic helped since you never authorized it. I still don't want to. Please. 
<clears throat> Sonic, hereby induct you into the Eggman Empire in order you to save us all. Understand? This is not an alliance. Isn't this almost word for word what Bowser does in Super Mario RPG when he joins the party? I have over two thousand cocoa right now because big fishing spots make it incredibly easy to gather collectibles but i can only level up sonic stats with the elder coco one by one it took me five minutes of waiting for the elder coco to level me up receive his dialogue select what i wanted to level up and hit the confirm button to level up my ring capacity by 30 levels meaning that it would take you roughly about 15 minutes to go through every single level on one stat to fully level up Sonic with the Elder Coco, you need to double that. Why can't I just choose how many levels to increase my stats by if I have the Coco to do so? It's too late for an I'm sorry from either of us. The subtitles here incorrectly read, it's too late for a I'm sorry from either of us. Yo, so did cyberspace actually interact with my brain? It was designed to catalog neural networks, among other things. So yes. All right, hear me out. Do you think all those locations I visited were pulled from my memories? That is plausible. It imported the data of your memories and applied it to your surroundings so you could comprehend them. Maybe that gave me the edge I needed to escape each time. I was covering familiar ground. <laughs> Go me! Okay, but why did they only look like Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and the Disproving Your Hypothesis City? You remember layouts from other places, but not what they look like? Also, one of the Egg Memos mentions the terrain shifting to look like those places too, so does Eggman also only think of those stages? This is one I didn't find out about until going back to get additional footage. During my initial playthrough of this game, I noticed that the classic drowning jingle doesn't play as you're running out of oxygen in the water. However, it does play when running out of oxygen when trapped inside the balloon enemy. And it's the Sonic Colors version of the theme, not even a unique one. I was taking in the story of the Ancients and came to a certain realization. Considering that this game goes out of its way to canonize almost every game in the Sonic franchise, isn't it kind of weird that the Ancients and the Babylonians were able to crash land on this planet, basically no problem, but the Black Arms, whose only reason for wanting the Chaos Emeralds was to break through the planet's atmosphere, couldn't? Is that? Is that a trash from Sonic Fishing on Sonic Cafe? You stray from the past. Turn back. Complete your mission. Stray from the path? I've never had a path! I've always been allowed to do whatever the hell I wanted! Oh, except for the 2D sections on Chaos Island. Those kind of defeat the purpose of an open zone. Ah, oh, damn it, I missed a red ring. Hold on, can I go back? Wait, so I can turn around, but an invisible wall stops me from going back? Even Sonic 06 let me go back! Explore. Harvest all you need from the island to succeed. Seek the one you call Elder Coco to enhance your speed and vitality. Seek the one you call Hermit Coco to exchange one for the other, or make him offerings to raise your strength and resilience. Use your companions to better navigate the island. Enter the purple portals to find the keys and resources you need. All will aid you in your journey. Uh, I kind of get the feeling I was supposed to be told these things on Kronos Island. You know, the first one? I'm on Uranos Island right now. The last one. In fact, aside from my attack and defense, I've already done everything there is to do in this game. I don't know why you're telling me all this now. You're a little late for that. So, this genuinely might be the hardest sin I've ever had to write for a game. Like, I sincerely wish I wasn't writing this right now. Because initially, I thought the end was really weird, kind of out of nowhere, with a boss fight that, while fun at its core, didn't match with the rest of what the game was going for. In fact, I initially thought this was an intermission for something much greater to come. This is, without a doubt, one of the worst final bosses in a Sonic game, and that pains me to say. Like, I actually think I died a little because of that. After a very fun experience with some of the best supersonic fights in the series, hell, some of the best boss fights in the series, period, 
I get the feeling that the end wasn't meant to play out this way, and there's a couple of reasons why I think that. Never mind the fact that it's a proper Ikaruga minigame, the cutscene before this shows Sage taking full control of the Supreme Titan, which Super Sonic knows is the case. But right before the battle, he speaks as if to the Ancients themselves, even though he saw Sage take control of the Titan. Furthermore, the tutorial pop-up tells us to, and I quote, work with the Titans to defeat the end. Plural meaning they were probably all meant to come back for an epic showdown. Instead, not only are we not controlling Sonic in this boss fight, not only is Super Sonic not doing a damn thing during this fight, but we're relegated to piloting the Supreme Titan in a Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter minigame, meaning we don't even get to use the Titan's proper abilities. Sonic's pre-fight dialogue is fantastic and inspiring. Too bad it makes no sense! The end's monologue during the fight is phenomenal. It's the most chilling set of lines a final boss has ever had in a Sonic game. Too bad the fight is the equivalent of a dinky Megazord shooting peas at the moon. And you can tell that what it's saying is directed at Sonic, whom we're not even controlling during the fight. But to me, the worst part of it all is that the end is the most try-hard failure of a villain we've had since Infinite. I knew, even before the game came out, that the voice guiding Sonic was going to be the surprise antagonist. And they set up this eldritch being, this creature that they were purposefully adumbrating for us because we shouldn't even fathom how titanically gargantuan this Lovecraftian beast who was hunting down the ancients from their own home was. And you know what? Maybe it's my fault. Perhaps I only have myself to blame for expecting a behemoth among the pantheon of gods the Golden Hedgehog has faced, such as a water god of destruction, the prototype of the ultimate life form, a mechanical usurper who modified his own body and infused the data he collected from his enemies with the power of chaos, a super dimensional sun god whom presides over time, a primordial hyper energy organism from the dawn of time incarnating darkness, a literal consumer of time and space capable of salvaging time discarded. And it's just a purple planetoid that shoots light and dark pellets at us with the occasional laser beam from time to time. And I hate its motivation. Aside from Metal Overlord, none of the deities we fought as Supersonic were really all that sentient or spoke to us. The end is audibly highly intelligent, but its only purpose is to hunt down civilizations and destroy their planets. For really no reason. And normally that's fine, but because they're beastly. We know they don't reason. I mean, sh even Perfect Chaos had a reason for what he was doing. It was to punish the ancient Echidna and protect the Chow. The Bio Lizard was programmed to destroy the planet. Even its motivation was grounded in someone else's pain. This is just indiscriminate for the sake of being indiscriminate. It's not really scary. It's not really impressive. Honestly, it's really just a letdown. And you only fight this thing on hard mode as if it's some sort of prize, which it's not. You would think that for a game that encouraged you to fight Guardians and Titans using a curated combat system, they'd try to utilize that to the fullest here, and... It's just fucking Toho, dude. And you know how I was talking about how great the end's monologue is? Man, I wish I could hear it. Or at the least have it subtitled, and I get why it's not. It would be too distracting for a bullet hell segment, but goddamn is it hard to hear half the time through the music and constant sound effects. You know, I can't wait for future games where we see the end just floating in space, except we never get to see the giant hole Sonic made through it. You're gonna hardly recognize me when we see each other again. I wonder if Cream and Sticks are free. I'm sorry, Sticks? The Badger? Good to get back to my a character we've never met in this continuity? On account of you guys not wearing bandages, having necks, Sonic's arms not being blue, and the fact that Knuckles doesn't look like Andre the Giant? Oh, a second set of credits. Uh, okay. Also, does that mean the big is just stuck in cyberspace now? We never really got him out of there. It's got an accent! Yes! Yes! Does the zap mean? 
You tease it from the beginning, and I feel like after everything, I still don't really understand what the symbol means. Is it the Eggnet Cloud? Were the ancient souls being uploaded to your network? Meaning we effectively didn't bring them to peace? Well, that can't be, because the symbol can be found embedded in the ruins. So what is it then? But ultimately, the greatest mystery of them all was... What was he cooking? No, like seriously, where did Sonic get this Rathalos outfit and this meat? I know he hunts monsters, but he's not quite a monster hunter. Also, the barbecue spit minigame is broken, because unlike fishing, you don't need to pay any purple coins to do it, but like fishing, you get a bunch of tokens to trade for performing well. And granted, it's not like purple coins aren't plentiful through Starfalls, but assuming you didn't have any, you wouldn't need any. everyone, Charai5 here. Thanks so much for watching my CinemaSins pastiche of everything wrong with Sonic Frontiers. I'd like to give a shout out to the Patreons, the members, all those people who support me and have been with me through these past few months. If you weren't aware, I did a marathon of every single Sonic game, which you can find over on the Charai Live channel. That is my VOD channel for all my past streams, either here on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, but my question for today is, what did you guys think of Frontiers. I it's it's I would like to talk about it more in depth, but I really loved it. There were of course, you know, shortcomings personally that I think it had. It's not a perfect game, but it is probably and maybe it's too soon to say my favorite 3D Sonic game. <laughs> um yeah, but we'll talk about that at a later point in time. Uh until next time, you know, follow socials, follow all that good stuff. Thank you again so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Stay safe. Stay awesome. This is Charai Live. Charai Live. Wow. This is Charai 5. <laughs> Signing off.